Why does everyone want a Fuji X100V? It is my favorite camera that I own. It's the least expensive of my cameras. It's the lowest spec of all my cameras. So why the hype? First of all, when there's this much sudden demand for an item, a significant portion of that demand is just gonna be people who are wanting the item just because other people have it or want it. It's just sort of like a snowball effect. It's a silly reason to want it, but it's a reason nonetheless. Later, we'll talk about why this could be a good thing. It is like a piece of art. There's something to be said for an item being inspiring to use. It, it can be a psychological, emotional connection you have with what you're using because it's an extension of your hand, mm -hmm. extension of your eye. This is a big one. Because the lens is kind of partially built into the body and because the shutter is a leaf shutter, which means the shutter is actually in the lens. It's not like a thing that goes ch -ch -ch. It has a tiny profile for this kind of camera. That means it's pocketable, which means you can take it everywhere with you, which is probably one of his biggest selling features for me. You know, people will put, you know, filters and cool square hoods on this. And for me, that takes away one of his biggest benefits, which is that it's small and I can put it in my pocket. So to each their own. So Fuji has a storied past in film development. So they've created film stocks used in film cameras, and they've taken that knowledge and applied it to the digital medium. And it's hard to argue with Fuji colors. When you're shooting JPEGs on the X100V, you can have the raw files essentially processed in the camera with a certain look applied to it, which is called a film simulation, and it's meant to kind of emulate different film stocks. You go a little deeper into that, and you have the world of recipes, which is a film simulation that's further customized and then saved into one of the seven presets that the camera allows, which means you can switch back and forth between one could be black and white, one could be a color one, it could be a different flavor of color, and you can switch back and forth between these, and there's a whole community around it where people are sharing their recipe. You can customize anything, right? I did a whole video about how I, I just shot this, all the photos for a photo set, all with recipe, all just in JPEG, I didn't edit anything. So you can adjust things like dynamic range, the highlights, the shadows, the saturation, film grain, and the color chrome effect, which is another important variable that doesn't get talked about much. In a digital photo, when you increase the saturation, you'll notice, if you, especially if you go crazy, the colors start to look terrible. Like they look very like digital and almost fluorescent and completely unnatural. Now the color chrome effect is a process in the camera that is essentially boosting the colors, but keeping them natural and kind of like deepening them by, I think a part of what they're doing is reducing the luminosity of the color so that it doesn't have that weird digitally kind of fluorescent look to them. It's hard to duplicate. You can duplicate it, but it would take a long time to do for each image in say Lightroom or Photoshop. When you, you know, when you have a, the limitations of a single focal length, which is 23 mil, which is the equivalent of 35 mil on a full frame camera, that limitation somehow sets you free. You know, free from a million different considerations. You are there just in the moment, you're capturing and that's it. The sensor is plenty capable. You can shoot raw photos, they're professional looking, 26 megapixels, but really what this camera is meant for is fun. So I did a very unscientific test a while back where I lent out the Fuji X100V. There's a video on the YouTube channel from over a year ago where I lent it out to people who were used to taking photos on their phone and I thought that they'd love kind of upgrading to the Fuji and they'd love the experience, but it turned out they weren't really a fan. It was kind of too cumbersome, it was too big, it's too bulky compared to a phone. The people who seem to enjoy this camera most are photographers, you know, people used to much larger cameras with interchangeable lenses, all that. And this is a way of sort of rekindling their love of photography from the early days because it's all stripped down and it's just about enjoyment. And so I think a lot of the people who jumped on this Fuji X100V bandwagon, the TikTok hype, whatever, I think they're gonna realize that too. They're like, I'm not really into this camera. I'm not really into photography. I like using my phone, but I don't wanna deal with all the mess of this camera. So then they're gonna end up all on Marketplace. I think they're gonna be like barely used. So I think for anyone who's willing to kind of wait out the hype storm of the Fuji X100V, especially once Fuji has some more stock, you're gonna see a bunch of units on Marketplace and they're gonna be some good deals to be had. Right now they're inflated. It's a crazy wait from Fuji, so people are just going on Marketplace and buying overpriced ones. But I think if you're willing to wait, I think there'll be some good deals. Then again, what do I know? <laughs>